Welcome to a very special edition of TFL Talking Trucks podcast. It's very special because I'm on location. I'm in Michigan at the Michigan Proving Grounds with Ford. And this show is all about the all new 2023 Ford Super Duty. You might be saying, Andre, okay, but you did some shows a few months back where you introduced the Super Duty and it's already on sale. What's the deal? Well, the deal is, is that we're learning a lot more detail about this truck. Um, now we have access to all of the higher level trims, all the features, all the technology that these trucks offer. So in this episode, um, I want to really dive deep into several areas. First of all, powertrain. So I have Paul and Sean. Paul, he is a specialist in their gas engines and Sean is a specialist in their diesel engines. So I'm going to talk to them about the powertrains and what makes the most important or one of the most important elements of this truck work, which is the engine. Um, and then I have Liz who did and was responsible. She was on the team that did all the gauge cluster configurations because for years and years, I've been asking manufacturers, all of them, not just Ford, I've been asking them to offer more options and more information when we're towing and when we're going off road in our trucks. And I think this truck delivers. So I want to see how that works. So I have two trucks here, actually. I have an XL F250 and I have a Lariat F250. So we can show you, um, I can show you some options. But before that, I, I want to thank some of our Patreon supporters, you guys who make our podcast possible. For example, I have Jerry of Lanitis, Brandon Floyd and Brandon Zyder supporting us just within last week and really appreciate that patreon.com slash tfl car is the best way to talk to us because we watch that area very very closely every day so if you have a question or comment go to tfl i'm sorry patreon.com slash tfl car so you can interact with me and some other members from our team uh, most of us actually watch that so really appreciate your help your donations help us a lot obviously to create this podcast and much more so uh, let's start with this truck so this is a crew cab xl f250 and this has as you can see on the door or if you're just listening to us on the front door there is a 6.7 liter power stroke v8 badge um, actually both of the trucks i'm standing next to right now they're both 6.7 liter v8 power strokes standard output there's also the high output version but if you take a look at this excel um, it's a basic work truck um, it's shown here in white and of course it has a basically blacked out front bumper blacked out grill very simple lights but for 2023 the reason why i said it's an all-new truck it's because they changed a lot and that's what i learned about in the previous episodes of the podcast most of the body panels are new the hood the fenders the doors the bed sides and they're still aluminum so the chassis have not hasn't changed a lot the steel frame is still there the aluminum body changed some even though from a first look it may not look very different from the previous trucks but when you come up to the bed for example the center step here between the cab and the rear axle so you can access the bed a little bit easier this truck is shown with this uh, front toolbox in the front of the bed as well so they added the steps there's also a step that folds out there's an option for a folding step below the step so it's basically a staircase so if you're a small statured person you can actually climb up into your giant truck which is just makes it easier this is a standard bed option which is still six and three quarters feet and this is a work truck so there is no damping on the tailgate but it is bed lined and it's shown here oh yeah it's shown here with an optional two kilowatt or 2000 watt 120 volt system basically they call it pro power on board that's the ford marketing language um, so this new super duty does offer some inverter high power inverter support and we have actually a demonstration of that on our tfl truck channel so check out oldtfl.com for everything tfl um, 
about the automotive industry period and specifically about trucks of course as well so one of the things i really wanted to show you and tell you about is of course capability right so they also redesigned their hitches this hitch you can see the the hoops underneath the rear bumper i'm looking at the conventional hitch uh, they're a little bit rounded here, so I think it's really easy to access. This is two and a half inch uh, shank receiver. They also, here you can get, of course, a seven pin connector for your trailer. And also below it, uh, this four pin connector. In this case, if you had a fancier Super Duty, you can also get a 12 pin, either camera or sensor, wired sensor connector for stuff like your blind spot monitoring on your trailer or additional cameras on your trailer uh, and much much more so that's all there towing has increased if you get a special configuration of the Ford truck the new Super Duty can tow up to 40,000 pounds we have a video coming out coming out soon about that yes 40,000 pounds is insane basically CD of course CDL commercial driver license territory uh, and payloads are really good. Let's look at the payload. Let's see if this one has a sticker. Let's look at the payload really quick. This is an F-250 diesel crew cab 4x4, 2,534 pounds. So that's okay. Uh, I think this may not have like the heavy, the heavy um, spring package and axle package because the gross vehicle weight rating is about 10,000 pounds for this three quarter ton but they also have other ratings like 11,000 and above um, gvw ratings that bring your payload way up and of course their maximum payload on their f-350 is 8,000 pounds huge number and it's of course partially enabled by the aluminum body which doesn't weigh a lot so do you want to jump in in the passenger seat with me and i want to show you a little bit about what's happening inside this truck so this one is a six person configuration let me fold this down take the laptop down so you can see it's a kind of simple truck it's got vinyl seats vinyl floor but still it's a six person configuration because you got three in the front and three in the back and this is a full crew cab they call super crew these trucks still have the regular key of course push button start also is an option but the really great thing about this key is because if you look here this is the uh, the front glove box they're lockable so you're using the trucks key the ignition key to lock certain areas like your glove box if this had a center console um, I'll show you it in a second. You can also lock that. And also the rear seat storage you can lock. I'll show you that in a minute as well. So that's really cool. So how about this? Let me start this truck up a little bit, really quick. So get in with me. I want to show you the basic cluster. And um, then I want to talk to the engine guys before we move on in this podcast. So there we have it, the diesel engine comes to life and I have very traditional gauges, traditional, in this case, um, this kind of basic plastic steering wheel, my shift column, column shifter for my 10 speed automatic. And they have, of course, 10 speeds now across the board in the new Super Duty. I have my climate control system, which is knobs and buttons, which is very simple and which is what tr most truck consumers really love because you can operate it in gloves or your bare hands. Um, very convenient down here. And then you have traditional speedometer and tachometer and a little screen in the middle. So before we dig in uh, with all the experts, so let's go um, and see, I wanna talk to Paul first. So Paul was part of the team to develop the gasoline engines for the new Super Duty. Uh, the older 6.2 liter V8 is now gone. Now they have two options. They have a new 6.8 liter gas V8 and the 7.3 liter Godzilla V8, the gas engine, 
continues with some updates. But what I really want to know is why two engines? Why not just one? And also the 6.8 is their new base entry-level engine and they got the pricing down on that engine. So uh, the new Super Duty starts at around $44,000 with that engine. I know $44,000 sounds like a lot of money, but these days for a heavy-duty truck, that's actually highly competitive. So I want to talk to Paul and find out design about the engines and what's going on there. So let's go to that interview right now. So the new 2023 Super Duty starts with gasoline power and the 6.2 liter V8 is no more. They now have a 6.8 liter in addition to the big Godzilla 7.3. And to learn everything possible about these new engines, because I'm really curious, I got Paul here. Hey, Paul. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice uh, to can meet you introduce you. yourself briefly, please? Yeah. Paul Murray. Uh, I'm a powertrain engineer at, at Ford Motor Company. All right, so I wanted to learn. So I have some familiarity with a 7.3. Yep. So at TFL Truck, we used to own a 2020 uh, Super Duty with a 7.3. Okay. It was a really good you know, option for us at the time. Uh, but now you're introducing a new engine. Yes. So, so you use the, some of the things that you have on the 7.3 over there to create this new entry level engine. So let's dig in. Sure. So we took uh, the 7.3 liter Godzilla engine and we used the base architecture, you know. So the block itself, yeah, exactly right. the heads. Yep. So it's iron block. And it is an iron block, aluminum, aluminum head. Aluminum head, right? okay. And uh, we shortened the crankshaft to reduce the stroke on it. Okay. So that we can make 6.8 liters and we wanted to give a good durable product for the entry level. Um, it still has the same technology that we have in the 7.3 liter. It's still got a dual equal variable cam timing. Um, it's got the cam in the block like we talked about. And it's, uh, it's a two valve roller camshaft. Okay, so st stepping to the front of it really quickly. So, so you wanted to make it, you know, a lot of fleet customers buy these trucks, right? That's right. So it, these two have a 6.2, and just looking on the configurator, just very recently, I was trying to build a 2023 truck, yeah. and uh, with a 10-speed, which is a little bit different 10-speed on this engine than the other engines, but there's almost $1,700 difference. So this is more affordable. So I wanted to learn, you know, how were you able to kind of offer slightly more affordable choice, but still a lot of power, right? Yeah. So 405 horsepower? 405 horsepower, 445 foot-pounds of torque. All right. This. So we tried to keep it economical for the entry-level fleet owner or customer. And uh, like you said, it was still made it up with a 10-speed transmission. A little bit different 10-speed transmission, but still a 10-speed. So, so not as not as high torque capable transmission, yeah, right? For, it's got, uh, it doesn't have the same trailer tow capability that we would have with our premium 7.3 liter. Okay. But still plenty capable. Still has very good numbers. And uh, yeah, it's, like I say, we wanted to take a, our very durable product and make sure we had a, a great product to offer t in the entry level. Cool. Um, I want to talk about the valley here. Yeah. So the area underneath the intake, basically. That's right. Yeah. So basically, as you know, that that's, that's a closed valley there. So we don't use the intake manifold to seal the valley on this block design. And yeah. that way, we don't get any of the heat into the intake manifold. We're trying to keep the air charge very cool and dense so we can fill the combustion chamber with a nice air charge, put fuel to it and spark, and get the fuel economy for the customer and the performance for the customer. Right? We don't have to waste fuel because we have, uh, you know, the charge, the charge is already heated. Yeah, so this is where the air is coming yeah, in, that's right? That's right, and right. that's an electronic throttle body. Right here, and then, of, of course, you've got the runners kind of, you yeah, know, the on, intake, on the top. Those tuned intake runners. Okay. <laughs> So now, what about you know some of the other items? The cutaway engine we see here. Yes. Is that an older design or? That is uh, that is uh, last year's design. Okay. But it, does a lot of it carry over? Almost all of it okay. is carry over. There's a couple of things that are changed, right? You know, so the 
but very, very minimal things uh, would be different on it. Okay. So, so what, what, what kind of tweaks did you make to the 7.3? We upgraded Godzilla? the, uh, <laughs> the piston, pistons, rings, and the uh, water pump in it, trying to make it more efficient, trying to get more fuel economy out of it, uh, trying to reduce the cost of ownership to everybody. It's uh, it's been a very reliable engine so far. And so you, okay, so you can kind of see the push rod yep, system here. Yep, the push rods and the roller lifters you see here. Right down here, and there's a cam down there. Yep, right below it. That's that's very neat. So, um, tell me a little bit more about the pistons and piston design, I guess. Yeah, so we took the pistons and tried to optimize for fuel economy. So it's all about the uh, flame front once you start the ignition from the spark plug. And so you need the bowl design so that you know you get the most efficient. You're, you're trying to get stoichiometric uh, and complete combustion. And uh, that's why you'll see the, the dish shapes on the pistons. And we're talking about this area right, right there, yeah. yeah. And of course the rings yep. kind of seal seal the whole yeah. thing. So you got your compression rings and you have your oil rings, right? You're trying to keep oil out of the cylinders. You don't want to burn the oil, but you want to keep the compression in and keep the actual blow by. You don't want in the oil pan. So you're trying to seal it both, both ways, right? From the compression and expansion. And you're trying to seal from getting oil into your combustion chamber. I gotcha. Yeah. And of course, I mean, the injectors are, or in the, right in the spark plug, yeah. Right in the up here, and your spark the, plugs are right down here in the cylinder head. Yeah. It's a two valve per two cylinder valve design. Yeah. design. And then the... Uh, Exhaust manifolds. Are these cast iron, cast too? Cast iron, yes. Well? <clears throat> stainless steel. They're stainless steel. The flange is really manifolds. thick. I mean, yep. it has it's, to be really it's durable, beefy. right? It's a tough truck, right? Yeah. We need it to exceed our customers' expectations. It's yeah. got the uh, beehive uh, valve springs, and you'll see that the valve springs are taller to, we want the valve springs to live longer, so you don't want coil bind, you don't want them you know, to really stretch them, because you've got a very high lift camshaft in here. You know, you got 600 on the intake, and uh, five, 539 on the intake, and 600 on the exhaust. And, Okay. And, uh, so, you know, that's an incredibly high lift camshaft in there. So we had, you know, 405 horsepower there. Yeah. This is 430? This is 430 horsepower uh -huh. and 485 foot-pounds of torque. So so it was a little bit less torque before. 475 probably on the uh, one that you had. Yes, yeah. So, so you boosted the torque number yeah. a little bit. So things that we did allowed us to get more torque out of the engine. And these engines are made for torque, right? They're made for being a truck pulling heavy weights, heavy loads, heavy trailers, heavy payload, you know. Do you remember the red line on these? I mean, is it somewhere 5,500-ish yeah, or something? Yeah, generally right in there. Uh, okay. They make most of their peak torque at like 4,500, 4,700, and, and usually red line on these engines is about 5,500. I mean, it's a big engine. You're, you're spinning a lot of mass. Yeah. I wanted to finish up over here because uh, we mentioned the different transmissions, right? Yeah. There's a 10R100 behind the 6.8 yes. and the 10R140 right there. Yeah. And I was also looking at the spec sheet and the gearing was a little bit different on the first gear as well, right? So it was a little bit more aggressive on this, on this engine, right? So I remember the, I'd have to look at the 10R100 or generally just on right around, the first gear is generally like 4.69, 4.7 yeah. range. Yes. And I would have to go back and look and see exactly, I don't know if it's 4.71 or what it is on right. 10R100 because I think that was similar gearing to another trans and I think that might have been 4.71 and uh, 4.69 on a 10R140. I would have to double check it, but. So it's not identical gearing no, as it's well. No, it's so. It's very similar. Yeah. It's, uh, but it's, why is it done? Just to get a little bit more low end, you know, right. just kind you of getting going? a little going. bit more grunt, right? When you're pulling a heavy load, like I say, it's got plenty of capability. Uh, and so, you know, you're trying to, you want the, the transmission and the engine to feel connected together. You want it to be an entire package where it feels well, whether you're doing 
you know, you're pulling, you're accelerating, or you're using engine braking to decelerate, and you want them to work well together. Mm -hmm. And by playing with the gearing, you basically match the performance of the engine with how the gear, gear ratios work or step ratio changes in the transmission. I gotcha. Well, really, really cool. Did we miss any details? Uh, I mean, do they weigh about the same, I yeah, guess? Yeah, they do. of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the crankshaft's still going to weigh very, very similar, right? You, you can take a little bit off of the throw of the crankshaft, but, but basically you're going to weigh about the same, very similar weights. Yeah. yeah. And the overall size is about the yeah, same, Yeah, it's going to be the same, right? The yeah. same distance across the top, same V pattern on it. It's the same block architecture. Uh, and like I said, the only thing you changed was the stroke, really, right? Yeah, we right? changed the stroke on it. The compression ratio is a little different between them. Uh, so we're just trying to get a little bit more performance and efficiency out of it, out of it, you know, make the engine work. And, and be affordable, too. Exactly. Yeah, That's the key, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, $1,700 is a lot of money, too, when you talk about people who are buying multiple trucks. Yeah, for their fleets, That's exactly. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, really appreciate it, Paul. Yeah, thank you thank very you much. Thank you very much. Really appreciate the time. Thank I hope you. you enjoy the day, and please feel free to ask any more questions, anything that we can help. All right, we're going to go tow now. Okay. Look at the diesel engines, well, and then... I think you should do that. And, you know, when you go out there, you can pull the one with the boat. It has a 7.3 in it. Okay. You know, and then the others will have the diesel in it. And uh, I think you'll enjoy the 40,000-pound trailer. I mean, that's <laughs> that's a lot of fun. Yeah. And you'll get to see how it is when people are pulling their boat and, you know, RV campers and stuff out there. And yeah. So uh, I think you'll enjoy that. It's a good experience. I'm assuming you did the off-road this morning. Yeah, we already did that's that. That's fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> and especially the new package, the XL off-road package with yeah. the aggressive tires. So, so yeah, we, we, we're trying to do as much as possible. Yeah, so. absolutely. That's what it is. It's supposed to be a fun day for you. Yeah. You know? Appreciate it. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you very much. You okay. have a great day. Okay? Thanks. So those were the gasoline engines. Um, I learned quite a bit. And it's really great to see those engines out of the truck so we can learn the details. Now, underneath the hood of this one, of course, is the diesel. And... I want to talk to Sean in more detail about what's going on here because now they also have the high output engine with 500 horsepower and 1,200 pound-feet of torque. <laughs> I want to know how they got to those numbers from the factory with warranty and all those things. Um, and of course, you might be saying, all right, that's great, but what about real-world fuel efficiency on these trucks and et cetera, et cetera. Well, stay tuned because Case who is behind the camera right now and I are actually driving one of these power stroke trucks from Michigan to Colorado. So we're gonna give you very soon real world long haul MPG review. So you will see, be able to see in the real world what the high output diesel does. And then we'll get more gas trucks in Colorado and test them on our Denver 100 MPG loop. So you'll know exactly what these new trucks are capable of, how much you need, how much money you need to fill them up and all those details. So let's learn more about the diesel. Let's go to Sean uh, so he can explain to us some of the changes and some of the internals on the new Power Stroke. Heavy duty trucks are of course about turbo diesel engines and I wanna learn as much as we can about the standard output 6.7 liter Power Stroke V8 and also the high output version. And I have Sean here from Ford team. So thanks Sean for being here. Thank you. Um, so. For 2023, this is the first year at Ford that we've split the 6.7 liter pickup truck engine into a base output, which maintains the same 475 horsepower, 1050 foot-pounds ratings that we have today. Yep. And then we also have a brand new high output, which is 1200 foot-pounds, 500 horsepower, best in class numbers for both. Um, so what we had to do to enable that if you want to make more torque and power, you need more fuel. Okay. So first, we've increased the displacement of the high pressure fuel pump. So that's tucked away right back in there, but that allows us to pump more fuel. Um, you know, once we get that to the injectors, we've got to get it in the cylinders. So we've increased the flow rate of those injectors by about 6% to get the fuel in exactly when we want it. So is the pressure of the fuel is about the same? It's about the same. Uh, so just the volume. Correct. The volume is increasing. Yep. Yeah, maximum pressure of 2,500 bar, which is about 36,000 PSI. Uh -huh. 
Um, so you've got the ability to put more fuel in the engine. You also need to put more air into it. So what we've done with the high output is we've water cooled the compressor housing. So we've got these two lines right here that you can see, one's an in and one's an out. Uh, there's actually a water jacket right around the turbocharger compressor. It's hard to see, but we feed low temperature coolant into that. Um, with a diesel engine, there's a limitation on, you know, as you're pushing more boost pressure, you're also building temperature. That temperature becomes a problem at some point. If we pull out temperature, we can push more boost. So at peak torque, this engine, the high output, make 35 PSI of positive boost pressure. Okay. Um, at peak torque, slightly below 30. So it'll do that all day long. Uh, very capable boosting system. And it's enabled by the additional cooling here. Correct. Yeah. It almost acts as an intercooler before the intercooler. Okay. Um, so we've got the ability to put more fuel in, more air in. Um, you know, that makes a lot of pressure. So what we've done to accommodate that is drop the compression ratio a little bit from 15.8 to one to 15.2. Okay. Just to keep our maximum cylinder pressures in check, keep the base engine happy and healthy for the life of a, you know, severe duty customer. Um, so you know, now we've made all of that power, we've burned all that fuel. We've made a lot of heat too. So the high output comes with upgraded stainless steel manifolds and turbocharger up pipes in order to be durable for its lifetime at these elevated temperatures. Um, there are other non-visible changes that we've made in order to accommodate that as well. We've got all new cylinder heads with revised cooling passages in order to help manage all of that heat that we're building in cylinder. Um, so a lot of these changes also trickle down into the base engine as well. Um, okay, so let's check it out. So what I thought originally, because you know, the 6.7, right, had the same power output in 2022 models, Correct. right? And then you bringing that, so I assumed it was the same engine, but that's not quite it, true. It, it is not, no. Okay. So, so a lot of the changes that we were forced to make for the high output also trickle down into the base engine, just from a manufacturing complexity reason. You wouldn't want to have two different pistons and two different cylinder heads in simultaneous production at the same time. So the base engine also picks up a lot of improvements. Uh, what it doesn't get, is a water-cooled compressor housing to push all of that boost that the high output needs, and also the upgraded manifolds and up-pipes. It just doesn't make as much heat as the high output, okay. so it can stick with the more economical materials. Is the turbocharger size about the same between the, them? The turbocharger size, both the compressor and the turbine, Diameters and trims are all the same between both of them. Okay. It's really that water-cooled compressor housing that enables the, the higher boost levels that we can push. Okay, and this cutaway version is actually the previous one, the 22. Correct. Right? But it allows us to see a little bit more detail inside. These yeah, are aluminum they, heads, right? They are aluminum heads. Okay. And yeah. Uh, this is still a really good cutaway to look at the overall layout of the 6.7 liter. Um, it's a pretty unique engine where it's a hot V turbocharger in the valley. Um, the intake manifolds are actually cast into the cylinder head cam covers. So, you know, the pressurized air coming from the intercooler comes up through here, splits each head, comes into the, the intakes right here, and then you can see it dumps right down into the ports out here. So it makes it an overall compact package. It's still a very large engine, yeah. but it's got to fit, you know, in a pickup in, truck. In a pickup truck, right. Yeah. So, so that, that's pretty neat. I, I like that. W tell me a little bit about this. Yep. So this is our EGR cooler up here. Okay. Um, diesel engines in order to control NOx emissions are required to run EGR. Um, cooled EGR is advantageous for uh, suppressing NOx emissions even lower. So we've got a relatively large EGR cooler here. We also have a bypass valve that we can bypass the cooler um, at cold start and light load operating conditions where you don't want to put all of the, the hydrocarbons and soot through the cooler uh, that could lead to fouling concerns. So we've got the ability to bypass that uh, when we when we need to. So EGR is exhaust gas recirculation, right? So, Correct. So you're kind of burning some of the exhaust multiple times, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you do that to keep your temperatures low. So um, oxides of nitrogen form at high temperatures. So um, keep those temperatures low in the diffusion flame, keep the emissions uh, happy for the after treatment. 
Okay, so we can see, you know, the oil filter system here, the pan, right? Yep. Has that changed much or at all for 23? Uh, it, it hasn't really. Um, okay. we, we do have a, a longer oil change interval. Um, we've added more oil to the sump. Um, you can get up to 15,000 miles per change now. So okay. that is a, an advantage that both the base and the high output have. Sweet. So let's, uh, I wanted to look at um, the, um, the cam. Is it, tell me about this. So uh, it is a cam and block push rod engine. Okay. So um, we've got cam drive. Uh, is that the fuel th pump? That is the fuel pump. Yeah. Yep. I gotcha. And is the, how's the valve driven? So push rod, so push rod, push pu rod driven. Push rod, yep. Four valves per cylinder. Um, no VCTs or anything. Diesel engines don't tend to use those. What is this passage over here? Uh, cooling passage. Co cooling, cooling passage, yeah. sweet. And let's look at the piston, or at least rod and piston design. Yep. So this is, that's over here, right? Yeah, so they are steel pistons now. Um, that was an upgrade that happened at the 20 model year changeover. Uh, we continue on with the steel pistons. Here, right? With yeah, yeah, just with lower compression ratio now. So so basically kind of the head is modified a little bit? Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah, th those have been a very robust design for us. It's kind of trickle-down technology from the heavy truck industry. And this is the sump down here? Yes. With the oil? Yep. We're talking about down here yeah. now. Large oil sump. And is this, what is, what is this part? That's our oil cooler. Okay. You know, when this engine's working hard for extended amounts of time, it makes a lot of heat, so you gotta pull all that heat out of the oil. Very, very cool. So then, this engine is not a cutaway, right? So we, we, can't, we nope. can't, like, look a lot inside of it. Right. But it's quite they, interesting they, that you use the same, like, size turbocharger. Yes. Yeah, they, they, there is a lot of commonality between them. Um, the 6.7 liter engine, debuted in 2011. It's been incremental upgrades ever since then. It is a really capable platform, and I think we've proven that with the 1,200 foot-pounds and 500 horsepower. Yeah, trying and you, to, you're taking it there now. Trying yeah. to give the customer the most capability possible. That's very, very cool. Well, did we miss anything, or did we hit kind of most of the I points? I think we hit them all. All right, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, really cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so thanks, Sean, for um, giving us all the details about the diesel engines. And now I'm standing in front of this Lariat because I wanted to show you the new grill uh, before we jump in and um, speak uh, with Liz about some of the configurations uh, on, on the gauges uh, that this truck offers. Uh, they have completely different looks, I think, because when you get go to this Lariat, the grill actually extends into the front headlight area. And um, not only does it make the truck, in this case, look more premium, but I just kind of like it a lot more than the basic light. When I look at the basic headlight on the new Super Duty, I don't know, it just, I know it's why it's there. I know because they wanted to bring value, of course, to many commercial customers and consumers, but just not super pleasing to look at in my opinion. But this configuration with the grill, where the grill extends all the way out, I think just makes the truck a lot more premium, breaks up this giant headlight area into several sections. So personally, I like that a lot more. I also like this red color a lot more. Obviously, it's uh, a lot nicer, a lot more expensive. Uh, this is a Lariat after all. Check out these wheels, like this classic phone dial. Uh, wheel design blacked out in this case you still have the manual or automatic front hubs you can leave them in automatic mode or you can um, disengage them manually um, if you really want it's still a solid axle front solid rear axle they changed the front axle suspension design a little bit and the rumor is this truck could handle a 37 inch tall tire without a lot of modifications or any modifications. Of course, they don't have that from the factory. What they do have from the factory is the Tremor truck that has 35s on it um, with a small suspension lift. So is a 37 inch tall tire coming later? 
we don't, we don't know yet. So Ford hasn't told us uh, this information yet. But let's get in inside. Let me show you the seat and then we'll talk about the gauges. So before I get in here, let me fold. Oh, the rear seat is already folded up because I am getting a little tired. So I wanted to take a nap and this truck might enable me to do that. So let me start the engine. All right, it's waking up. Hold on a second. All right, should we get in? All right. So this is a Lariat and they call it the mobile office, but <laughs> it's a little bit more than a mobile office. I'm just reclining right now. It's also, if you fold the rear seats up, it's also your mobile house, I guess, because the front seat goes all the way down. So you can actually lay down flat. And actually the button cushion just came up and it's almost like a flat surface. It's quite comfortable. Of course, they've had this in, uh, in F-150s for qu quite some time and some other trucks, but it's back here. It's here again for 2023. And then also, why is it the mobile office? Well, because you have 5G wireless connectivity using AT&T network. Um, if you have a subscription, you can uh, pair up to 10 devices. They have a demonstration here where they have the new phone or tablet holder in the front and the wires can actually go through this little area so it's not really cluttered. There's also a wireless charger. There's two USB ports up, up front here. There's another two USB ports inside the center console. There is more USB ports behind the center console for the rear passengers. So lots of power options. This one has 12 volt power, 120 volt power. This also has the power plug in the bed, also for two kilowatt uh, pro power on board. <laughs> So you have lots of way to keep your devices charged and connected to the network. So that's, of course, really important for the modern truck. This cup holder system goes from two to four. It's kind of like it did, but now it has little explanations here on in plastic to show you how the center console works. Uh, of course, giant gulps can be put in here. I just got my key out on this keyless system, but I have the manual key so you, I can show you locking the center or locking the glove box. I can actually lock the center console and I'll show you how to lock the rear storage as well. So if you're really worried about security, you can lock those items. Can it be broken into? Yes, but it's just an extra obstacle. So your items will be protected uh, or a little a little bit more protected than otherwise uh, they would be so how about this how about let's go to liz let's talk to her because she was involved intimately in the design of the gauges and all the extra information that you can now see including heads heads up display so let's go to that now all right i want to learn more about the new super duty and here i have liz hi, hi liz Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So can you please introduce yourself first? Sure. My name is Liz Koontz. I'm the instrument cluster design and release engineer for Super Duty. Sweet. So you basically were designing all the different gauge configurations, information. And one of the things I've been doing at TFL truck, because we drive trucks every week, I was like, more information for big trucks. And I think you did it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So let's start the truck up and kind of go over. We're sitting in the Lariat right now right? Yep. So it has that big 12 inch front cluster. Correct. Sweet. So, um, so let's go over a few things because right now it seems to be like what people are used to, right? Sure. You got the speedometer on the right, you got RPM on the left and you have some information in the middle, but there's a lot more going on. Yes. So one of the new things that we introduced for super duty is for the off-road tow haul and rock crawl drive modes we have a secondary information on demand screen section. So what you'll see is in this leftmost section, it's now customizable to be more than just the tachometer. 
Okay. So you go to settings. Yep, you go to settings, configure tow view. It'll say off-road for off-road and rock crawl. Uh, and then you can go through and select the information that you're wanting to see. So for towing, you might want to look at your trailer light status. There's also some general measurement screens that you can look at for temperature information and such. Um, you pick whichever one you want. We can pick the diesel measurements right now. And then for the primary IOD position, you can still go back and select your traditional screens that you'd want to look at. So maybe you want to look at... Or like fuel economy, for or example. Or fuel economy, yeah. yep. So you could look at off-road status, or you could put a trip screen here, or any of the traditional screens. Cool. So when we do our tow tests, um, the gauges on top, in the top section, are usually, they usually don't have numbers, numeric values, but now I see you do. Correct. That is a setting as well. Uh, if you go into configure gauges, you can select the temperature gauge option. In standard, those numbers are removed. They will only show up if you're approaching an over temperature stop condition. Mm -hmm. uh, in detailed though, they're available all the time and you can monitor them while you're driving. That's really cool. I think th I've been asking for that for years. <laughs> so finally, the Super <laughs> Duty, here. the Super Duty is delivering that. So that's really cool. And also I wanted to point out, so in the diesel measurements, um, so the engine brake is really important because going down the mountain, sometimes you cannot hear the engine brake being effective, but you have a gauge that tells you it's something is happening. So, Correct. so that's very, very important. And I can see, can you rev the engine a little bit? Because the rev counter is still on top there. Yep, it's still visible. It's just smaller form factor for the dual, dual screen. Sweet, and also you can, like you said, when you're going from mode to mode, things can change, like off-road. Let's look at off-road a little sure. bit. Oh, it's putting us in four high. Yes, the secondary IOD position, the selections will actually change between what mode you're in. Uh -huh. uh, it's configured for more off-road style versus tow haul. Um, like you could put the off-road status over here. And then again, you can still go back and look at your primary IOD positions, like trip. Trip, trip meter, yes. So, and of course, in off-road mode, I mean, a lot of things happen. They're like, the truck just asked you to put, you know, it went to four high, it enabled the rear locker. Is that light on? Yes, it yeah, is. So, but you can, of course, disable the rear locker if you wanted to. You can change to four low. So. So the truck is thinking for you, but you can kind of tell the truck what you want, right? It's giving you suggestions. Yeah, which is good. So we're still the boss, right? Yes. <laughs> All yes. right. So um, before, so let's finish up here and then go to the heads up display, which is also here. What if that's too much? Is there like a calm view? Yeah, there is. So if you go into my view, there's multiple selections here that you can choose from a list to customize. Calm view is one of those options that could really reduce what you're actually looking at. So if we wait just a second. Just, the, right. just the vital information. Your speed and fuel, basically. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it fits too much because that was the complaint I was hearing, right? When I was talking about, you know, give me more and more and more information. Everybody said, well, not everybody wants what you want, Andre. That's right. <laughs> but, but you could do that. So you can kind of quiet everything down. Yep. Which is pretty cool. All right, let's talk about the heads up display. So the new Super Duty for 2023, is that true? Is that the first like Ford branded vehicle with this multifunctional HUD? It is the first Ford branded vehicle with the windshield HUD, yes. Sweet, okay, so this is really cool. Not even the Raptor truck have that. So if you want the HUD, get this. Okay, so how do, can you configure that? Yeah, so there's uh, options that you have. It changes with the drive mode automatically, or okay. you can choose to change the setting yourself. So okay. what you're looking at now is the normal view. You can change it to the tow haul view, which has some towing specific information. And then you can also change it to the off-road view, which offers a different set of information. Um, you can also choose to remove some of the content if you find it to be too distracting. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also adjustments so that if you're having a difficulty time viewing it, you can make it brighter. You could also change the position, moving it up and down. Depends on your stature, right? Yep, depends on how you're seated, depends on how much you can see, depends on how much you want to see, and then you can also rotate it as well for the best viewing experience. Cool, and I was also um, 
in a different video, we did an off-road drive and I was on the Tremor and the Tremor has some additional features like the turn trail turn assist. Mm -hmm. And I was actually was able to see some of that information in the HUD as well. Yep. So there's uh, some redundant information between the instrument cluster and the HUD. Yeah, so it's kind of cool. So if you don't want to kind of put your eyes down on the gauge cluster, you can still use that. So that's, that, correct. That, that's That's pretty cool. And you have the towing. Can you rev the engine a little bit? Is there is there RPM there? So yeah, so you can see the RPM uh, there as well. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. All right, so the rear uh, seat area may look familiar to you if you're watching this podcast because it is. Uh, the cab hasn't changed much. So you still have the flat floor. You have your vents for the rear passengers. You have the heated seats in this case. This is a pretty fancy Lariat with an ultimate package. You also have this rear storage. So you can, um, underneath the rear seat, fold out this panel and it kind of locks in and it has also this center let's see if i can get this going this divider between the 40 60 split between this rear seat and if you're storing something valuable here let me walk around and show you something um, on that side you're also supposed to be able to lock down this area so let me close this up let me lower the seat. So I lowered the rear seat. The rear storage box is up. And now there's a little keyhole here in the rear seat where Chuck can turn. And now you cannot lift the rear seat back up because it's been locked. Um, so that's really a, another cool feature for security. So there are a lot of new kind of little touches that they've added throughout this truck. Um, that I think make it a lot more usable, helpful, especially I love the gauges, um, especially on this more premium truck with the digital gauges. I think that's really, really premium. So hopefully you got this deepest, one of the deeper dives into what makes a new Super Duty tick. If you want to learn more about it, additional payload ratings or towing ratings, uh, we have an off-road video coming up soon so you can see it actually work off-road and also towing videos. Come back, please, to oldtfl.com. You can check it out right there. Thanks for joining me on this special edition of TFL Talking Trucks. I'll see you next week.